Hello, and welcome to another Digital Surgical Pathology Signout. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel coming to you from the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. And our program is part of the uh, Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy. Our case today comes from the realm of uh, kind of lumps, bumps, and uh, ditzels, as I've titled them. Uh, I guess technically soft tissue. Um, the patient is a 32-year-old woman who has a retroauricular mass. And in thinking about this location, I think this is uh, somewhat of a unique location in many respects because there are certain lesions that are predisposed to this area. And in other ways, it's not so unique. Uh, so certainly any sort of lymphoid lesion uh, can present in this area, both infectious, reactive, and so forth. Um, as this is an unusual site for a, a lymph node, but then, I mean, not, not impossible. There are also a number of skin-derived tumors that can arise in this area, and uh, sort of a combination lesion uh, that's fairly unique here is angiolymphoid hyperplasia with eosinophilia. And then other lesions like milia on plaque and various other adnexal neoplasms can uh, present here as well. In addition, because the uh, skin is very proximate to the uh, temporal bone here, uh, both bone-derived um, and a re related soft tissue lesions can present in this location. And uh, if <clears throat> serious uh, uh, middle ear uh, problems have developed, they also can uh, extend to uh, present as lesions in this particular area as well. So it's kind of an interesting area anatomically. Well, our patient had a uh, rather firm uh, nodular lesion uh, in this area that came to uh, a biopsy. And so we can see that uh, we have skin here in the slide, uh, along with these rather nodular fragments of uh, pink tissue. Uh, the skin is not terribly remarkable, uh, but must have been overlying this uh, larger uh, fibrotic lesion, leading them to think of some sort of a uh, fibroma, maybe sometimes they would think of a cystic lesion. And we see here there's a, a little bit of delicate vasculature, some ad admixed fat. Um, and as we come into looking at higher magnification, uh, we see this very peculiar, um, you know, uh, level-like or lamellation-like uh, fibrosis, uh, sort of wavy fiber type of uh, fibrosis. Uh, very collagenous uh, lesion uh, with these uh, mildly uh, stellate uh, pattern fibroblasts or myofibroblastic type cells. Uh, not too atypical, a little bit of uh, nuclear uh, variability, but uh, no uh, distinct hyperchromasia or, or mitotic activity are observed here. Um, Maybe there's an adnexal structure here and then admixed into this lesion, uh, but it seems to be entirely uh, uh, stromal and a very fibrosing uh, type of lesion. So uh, just to sort of verify that we're dealing with uh, uh, collagenous tissue, uh, my colleague who worked this case up uh, ordered a nice uh, trichrome stain, which is about as beautiful a blue uh, staining pattern, as you can imagine. And just look at this nice uh, whirling and storeforming pattern with the uh, lamellations, uh, with intervening paler areas, uh, all staining nicely and solidly uh, blue. Um, we also did a CD34 stain, which will help to highlight the vasculature, but also shows that some of these cells uh, have a little bit of uh, CD34 uh, reactivity. Um, so is this a solitary fibrous tumor or something related to that? Certainly comes into the differential considerations when you're looking at this wiry uh, collagenous uh, matrix as well. Uh, but in fact, that's probably not the preferred diagnosis in this situation. This is uh, what's been called a circumscribed storiform collagenoma, or also uh, known as a sclerotic fibroma. Now of interest, uh, in some circumstances, this is a manifestation of a P10 deficiency syndrome, such as Cowden's disease. Uh, it's not a, a life or death type of diagnosis, uh, but certainly uh, identifying a patient with a P10 deficiency 
uh, would be something not to miss. Uh, so what is Cowden syndrome? Well, these are a group of disorders that are related to P10 deficiency uh, and may be associated with uh, tumors that will present in a variety of locations, as you might expect, uh, including breast, thyroid, endometrium, uh, kin, kidney, uh, skin, and GI uh, tract. And so once you've made this diagnosis of a Cowden syndrome or any other P10 deficiency syndrome, uh, these patients uh, would uh, definitely benefit from more intensive screening and potentially also testing other family members. Uh, making the diagnosis requires a, a mixture of major and minor, di minor diagnostic uh, criteria. <clears throat> and the major diagnostic criteria would be uh, those of uh, breast endometrial follicular thyroid cancers, plus one of these mucocutaneous uh, lesions, such as uh, the sclerosing uh, pelagenoma. There are other lesions that are, may be associated with this as well. And then lesser criteria would be uh, colon cancers, renal cancers, or, or papillary thyroid carcinoma, along with some other uh, uh, more bland lesions. So uh, we attempted to uh, evaluate this by actually doing a uh, P10 stain on our tissue. Um, and uh, in this situation, we would be looking for loss of uh, P10 reactivity. Uh, and I think that as you look here, we can see that there are many of these nuclei, if not most, uh, that are nicely positive with uh, P10, uh, indicating that this is not a deficiency syndrome. Um, so our final, final sign-out diagnosis on this case today is uh, sclerosing collagenoma without evidence of uh, P10 loss and therefore not a... Uh, candidate or uh, requiring uh, more extensive uh, screening diagnoses uh, and follow-up. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this uh, little bitzel. Uh, we hope that uh, if you like this or you have questions, you'll uh, make comments in the uh, area below. And please hit that button and subscribe so you'll catch future releases from our channel. Uh, of course, if you want to directly uh, contact me, you can uh, uh, reach me through any of those uh, contact locations. So until next time, thanks again for joining me.